Hello, welcome to Rygenix. In this video, we will learn about polymorphism. I have created three videos in this topic. First video, that is this video, we will learn about inheritance based polymorphism. Second video is about interface based polymorphism. And third video, we will discuss about how and why polymorphic behavior is implemented in two string methods. So, what is polymorphism? Polymorphism is one of the pillars of object oriented programming. Let's define it shortly first. The literal meaning of polymorphism means something that can occur in several different forms. And for programmers like us, it refers to the ability of a variable function or object to take on multiple forms. Polymorphism greatly helps in writing extensible applications. We will see that in Visual Studio in just a minute. There are two types of polymorphism, static and dynamic. Static polymorphism is easy to understand compared to dynamic. I am not going to discuss this in this video as there are a lot of videos and articles which clearly explains this. This series will be mostly about dynamic polymorphism. Dynamic polymorphism also known as runtime polymorphism. This means at compile time, the compiler does not know which method will be called. The actual method that gets called is determined at runtime. Let's discuss this in code. Let's create a console application. Name it polymorphism. I'll create two class, car and ship, with few attributes and methods. And slowly we'll build the code and try to explain inheritance based polymorphism. Please stay with me till the end. Let's create the class car. Car stopped. Let's rename it. We have created two class car and ship with two public properties name and price and two public methods start and stop. Now let's say these implementations are quite big. So it deals with multiple subsystems and finally it starts and stops the ship. So we would like to call it using an intermediary facade class. So let's go ahead and create that class. This facade has four methods to start and stop car and ship. Let's go ahead and call this from program.cs class. Let's instantiate car and ship. Let's instantiate our business facade. Let's call our start and stop methods. Let's run it. So we get the expected result. Car started, stopped, ship started, stopped. Now let's look at our code and identify if we can make our code a little more efficient and maintainable. We can see that there are a lot of code duplications and this tells us that perhaps we can reuse some of the code. How can we reuse code in Shisha? The most common way is inheritance. Can we think of a common base class which can have these attributes of car and ship? I think a good name would be a machine. So let's create a class called machine. Let's have our public properties. Let's have those two methods as well. Stopped. Let's inherit machine to car and ship. We don't need these two properties now as these are already available in the base class. Let's have these two methods as the way ship starts and stops and the car starts and stops are different. Now what is the main purpose of using a common base class and using the code? Because if we later want to update, extend or enhance the given functionality, then we will need to do it in one place. Now let's change the way we instantiate car and ship. Now can we do this? Yes, a base class reference variable can point to a derived class object. Because derived class is a specialization of base class, which means the derived class has all the capabilities of the base class. This is what polymorphism is. Now why do we do this? We will come to know in just a while. Let's change this as well. Ship is also a specialized version of machine and we can assign ship to a machine because ship is a machine. Now start car receives car but now car is a reference variable of machine so we have to pass machine to it. So let's change this. Let's run it. What do we get here? It seems the base class method got executed. Why? Because these are now base class reference variable. Hence, if we call this way, only base class methods will get caught. It means it basically hides the derived class method. 
If you mouse over, you can see it clearly. Hides inherited member machine.star. Use the new keyword if hiding was intended. Do we wish to hide it right now? No, we don't want to hide this. Now, how do we call this method using base class reference variable? Of course, there is a way. Let's go ahead and change our program. We have to downcast here. Cast it back to specialized version. That is car. Let's make the changes for all. Now let's run this and see. We get the output as expected. Car started, car stopped, ship started, ship stopped. But do you see any problem here? I see a couple of problems. First of all, it is cumbersome to every time come and do this kind of downcasting. Second, this is error prone too. In case if it's not able to cast, then it will throw a null reference exception. So if block is required to do a null check. Third one and most important one, this makes our code very rigid and non-flexible and primarily not extensible. Hence, this is not the recommended way of doing. So what is the recommended way? Finally, let's make our code the recommended way. That is, let's make our code polymorphic and see how does it helps. Since machine is a pure base class, we can make this an abstract class. Now, what is an abstract class and how it is different from concrete class? Let's quickly see the difference. Abstract class has not implemented property or method. It means it is an incomplete class. Now, since it is an incomplete class, it does not make sense to instantiate. So you cannot instantiate an abstract class. It can only be inherited. Abstract class is intended to be used as a base class. It means abstract class are not real business entities. So to summarize, abstract class is a class where we have at least one property or method as abstract and we cannot instantiate an abstract class because it is not a real business entity and doesn't make sense to instantiate. It is intended to be inherited only. Let's flip back to Visual Studio. As of now, let's make both the method as abstract. If it is abstract, it cannot have an implementation. Let's delete this. If you mark a method as abstract, it means you must override it in the derived class. Let's go ahead and make the necessary changes here. So what it says, Chip does not implement inherited abstract member. It means, as mentioned, we must override this. Let's make the same changes in car as well. Looks fine. Now, since these methods are overridden, let's make the necessary changes in business facade the way these methods are called. Now, since these are overridden, we don't have to downcast it. Let's rename this to machine. Even let's rename this as well, start machine, stop machine. And we can delete these two. Let's go and make changes the way these methods have been called. Start machine, stop machine. That's it. Now, this method just knows that there is a machine and it has to start. Now, how does it decides? At runtime, the runtime actually checks what type of object I have. Now, in our case, at runtime, it finds the instance of a car and it checks whether the method being called by the object has been overridden or not. If overridden, it calls the appropriate method. Now, if you want to start ship, you can come here and just pass ship. Let's run this first. Car started, car stop. Let's pass ship here. Ship started, ship stop. Now say you want to have a default implementation of start and stop method which will be used by some class but not by all classes. For instance, car and ship wants to call its specialized implementation but say there are objects which does not want to implement their own specialized version. So in that case, that object should call some default implementation. How can we achieve that? You have to come and make changes to your base class. Abstract method means you cannot have any implementation but if you mark this method as virtual, it means it can have a default implementation. Let's go ahead and mark this method as virtual. Now we have to give some implementation here. Let's say machine has started. It could be any machine. Let's make the similar change here. Let's create another class called airplane. Inherit machine to it. Let's instantiate airplane 
let's pass this airplane here now what it should print we have not overridden the methods here but we have a default implementation here so if we have not overridden it should print the default one let's run it so it says machine has started machine has stopped let's call car as well for the class where it has not overridden it gives the base class default implementation and for the class where it is overridden it gives the specialized implementation let's summarize what we have done we have marked the base class method as either abstract or virtual so the derived class can override them the derived classes have injected their own implementation of start and stop and those were executed properly using base class reference variable also we have seen how we can provide a default implementation by marking the method as virtual how does this actually work this is done behind the scene with the magic of CLR, which looks up to runtime type of the object and invokes the overridden version of the virtual method the main advantage is that in future if you want to extend your application you can achieve it with very minimum changes in the existing code thus the changes of impacting the existing functionality reduces considerably in our case i have demonstrated by extending a new airplane class that's all for inheritance based polymorphism make sure that you watch interface based polymorphism as well which is very important from interview question perspective i hope you guys found this video helpful if it did then hit the like and subscribe button to see more such content thanks